Welcome back to Bitsby Trip, and this is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. Now, this is the second part of our Merkle Standard visit, where we go through the GPU mining side of the facility and get an understanding on the approach at an enterprise scale. Now, let us peel back this setup. So this was running in from a 13.8 high voltage side, coming into a 2500 KVA transformer which sets that down from to 415, 240. And then that comes into low voltage switch gear, which set up the power panels, which host an array of 125 amp breakers. And those breakers feed over to the 125 amp PDUs. Now that's set up to support just over 2,100 of these rack mount eight card boxes. Now these boxes were set up with a pair of 750 watt power supplies. Now, those power supplies are the HP Platinum style server setup in this custom built board that's hosting a G3900 CPU and 8 gigs of memory. And then on the GPU front, they have BC160s, which is the AMD compute GPU designed for cryptocurrency mining and other compute related jobs using the RDNA architecture with HBM2 memory. Now let's talk performance of this farm. So with 2,100 units, these cards, the BC-160s, get about 69.5 mega hash per card at roughly 100 watts. So you're looking between the system and all that, you're looking at 1,088 watts for the entire box running on ETH. That's 556 mega hash per machine times 2,100 machines. You're looking at 1.1 terahash worth of mining performance on ETH for 2.2 mega watts of electricity now on raven and you're looking right around 268 giga hash worth of raven in total for this entire farm that's running the cards to try to keep the power limit down so you're only running about 15.5 to 16 mega hash per card on raven for roughly that 100 watts 105 watts pushing you still around 2.2 megawatts in total use on all 2100 units and then if we take a look at Ergo, it's around 2.2 terahash worth of Ergo in a farm like this. So you get about 130 mega hash per card times eight of them. That gives you just over one giga hash per rig. And that gets you the 2.2 on Ergo. Now you're probably wondering how do they handle all of the heat and temperature within this room. Now this is a pretty big open room as you can tell from the video here and a lot of it is like anything else if you're trying to capture heat. So the intake side is the area we were standing in and there was a pretty decent inflow coming into the room throughout the building that has intakes further down into another room that has evaporative cooling set up. So there was cool air roughly 68 degrees coming into the main intake room and then exiting exhaust exceeding 90 to 100 degrees. So again, large and small operations, it's about creating your intake cool lane and then ensuring that you have some level of separation between your hot and cold lanes as you can see they have with the large tarps that's going up to the ceiling. Now we did take measurements of heat into the units themselves and on the surface area of them, being right there in the mid 80s and then you can see the separation of the hot lane and a lot of the heat coming up out of the machines and up into the ceiling rafters behind the tarp separation and you can see the heat really expand up into the 90s plus overall it was a heck of an experience to see what over one tera hash of mining hash power from a gpu standpoint looked like and it really makes you wonder when you look at something like the ethereum blockchain and even with it being down almost 20 percent from its all-time hash rate of looking at over 100 looking at over 850 terahash still on ethereum right now it's mind-boggling on how many different operations like this that are out there along with home miners all right my dudes hopefully you guys enjoyed this one on our next part we'll be going through some open air containers both with evaporative cooling and with just base air intake and going through some of the challenges you get when running an open container and the things you have to consider, especially if you're doing evaporative cooling when it comes to plumbing, water recapture, evaporation, and just general maintenance of anything that has to do with water. Make sure you're liking and subscribing. I'll catch you guys on the next one.